come together in a collective project to really question the norms of, uh, of knowledge production itself. And I think that is reflected in our panel today. What does it mean to say that research can be or is colonial? The meaning of this might seem obvious to a lot of us, and I think to a lot of people it's absolutely not obvious, actually. I wrote about this a little bit in terms of the aim context of um, Mozambique in the, in the monograph uh, Lindiwe referred to. And one of the words um, that Mozambicans use to describe how partners often interact with them is an idea of protagonismo, right? Always wanting to be in the center of the picture, always wanting to drive the agenda, always wanting to be uh, the main story. Um, and so today I really just wanted to um, draw inspiration from the amazing work that SOAS has been doing around decolonizing higher education, but also UCL in terms of liberating the curriculum, and Oxford University and Cambridge and so on. Um, and share with you some experiences that we've had at Imperial College in terms of what we've been doing around decolonizing our Masters in Public Health program. I pointed to the fact that we need to think beyond what are just so deeply embedded understandings of knowledge and what knowledge is and how knowledge is produced. So um, the recent work I've been doing, I've been um, trying to think through in relation to my own practices, not both as a researcher but, but as a, a teacher in higher education. So um, I want to just uh, place this in within um, changing societal landscapes, the fact that most of our learners, certainly in UCL Medical School, who don't have a graduate entry program, are Gen Z learners, they have a very strong social justice agenda, they're telling us and managing a lot of this change from bottom up. 